What are we performing to move us forward? And then we come to speech. What are you saying? And, and I know that um, <coughs> sometimes if I'm not feeling too good, I have this book by Louise L. Hay, and it's called Heal Your Body. Anybody familiar with that? Open it up. I don't care if your big toe hurts. She's got an affirmation for that. She is like the queen of affirmations. So when we, when you're doing an affirmation and when you have something like that, why are we, what, you know, like let's like say repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Why are we repeating it? Well, we're repeating it so often so that our body absorbs it and it goes into your subconscious, oh, which is another topic for another month. <laughs> but from the subconscious, then it will manifest. So, so Louise, affirmations. But, but another reason why we say those affirmations is because we're, I think, conditioning ourselves for what is yet to come. And, and, but I'm going to come back to that too. So, um, then the right work. If you're doing the right work. And, and an example I think about that is Gandhi. And his whole civil disobedience, non-violent movement in India changed a country. And, of course, there's the right meditation. And this is from uh, the Tao Te Ching. And it says, Wise are they who center their hearts on the inner essence of things and not on the outer appearance. Wise are they who center their hearts on the inner essence of things and not on the outer appearance. So getting ourselves in order, and when we have ourselves in order, then it's easier to move forward and to accomplish those things that we want to. Now, I, I want to guess that everybody here knows the Cinderella story. And if anybody doesn't, does, does everybody know the Cinderella story? All right, okay. I, I kind of thought so. It, it's been around for a while. And, and I'm going to get to that. But I'm going to take a little bit more from my mother-in-law's book about, about affirmations. And so she had this little section that says, only thoughts created with intense feelings bring results. You will want to repeat your affirmations until you feel the intense desire moving you. Okay. Now, the second one, repeat your affirmation in private. Affirmations are our secret, and we want to prove the process to ourselves, and the distracting energies of other people will dilute our focus and our intentions. And then, of course, the third one, find the right time to do it. So what does that have to do anything with Cinderella? Well, Cinderella, what does Cinderella want more than anything else? She wanted to go to the ball. What did her mother or stepmother say and her stepsisters? <laughs> no way, girl. You ain't going to the ball. You're staying home. Oh, but I want to go to the ball. I can. No, not going to happen. So she voiced what she wanted, but other people diluted that and said, no, you're not going to go. You're going to stay home. And that ball was a deep desire for her. So deep that when everybody left, what did she do? She probably, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure how, I mean, I've seen the Disney version, so I'm not sure if this version fits, but I'm sure she was a, that inside she was a really strong young lady. And that, if she was scrubbing that hearth and everybody was gone, she's going, all I want to do is go to that ball. All I want to do is go to that ball. And she, she went over and over that so many times, like, we all know what happened. The fairy godmother shows up. And that like gives her everything. 
It's like the makeup show where you, you get made <laughs> up, you know? Or the overhaul where they take your old car. They, she took the old pumpkin and made a carriage out of it. She got everything. She got the dress, she got, the, she got everything. So off to the ball she goes. And, and you know what? I don't blame her. She was, she was having a time of her life at that thing. She was just having a time of her life, fun, dancing, met the prince. Wow. <laughs> but then the Cinderella, Cinderella setback happened. And that was the clock. Bomb. <laughs> oh, no. I got to go. And so out the door she went. And the prince is like, where are you going? We're having such a good time. What, what's wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? I'm <coughs> not sure what kind of deodorant they had back then, but I'm sure he smelled good, you know? <laughs> anyway, he, he, and so she runs out and miraculously gets in the carriage and is sped off home. But there's something that stayed behind, and that was the glass slipper. So, she's back home now, and everything is transformed, and oh, that's a topic for another month, transformation. But, one thing, the clue that was left behind, the shoe was the clue. So that's how the prince is going to find her, with the shoe. I'm going to go around this glass silver and try it on everybody. So, we all know how it all turns out. Live happily ever after. So enough of Cinderella. But I think that's a good point. At least today. So I'm going to go back to the prospering woman and back to a viewpoint of the random acts of kindness thing. So she, she wrote here, let's just practice random acts of kindness. Let somebody go in front of you in the store. Uh, if the clerk is grouchy, give them a smile and say something nice to them. Uh, just a kind word. And if you're in a hurry, just take a moment to say thank you. Or just something kind. It, it's like it's giving a gift. But what this does, she says, it helps release that tight, self-concerned part of ourself that says, we don't have enough. <clears throat> so you're giving. <clears throat> and that's a spiritual law. The, the law of giving and receiving. So give it away. Give it away because when you give it away, guess what happens? You're creating a void. Yeah. Create a void. Now you got a void. Now something's going to fill that. And if you've been doing the following kind of this eightfold path, and if your intention is good, and if your viewpoint is good, and if you're mindful and everything, what you get back is karmic. What you put out, you're going to get back. Well, that seems pretty reasonable. I sometimes don't like afterthoughts, but I'm going to share an afterthought here. Um, we have a new kitten, and uh, she was a rescue kitten, and we got her through the Madeira Veterinary Center. They have a Facebook page, and so um, here's this cute little kitten, and uh, we were catless. We had several older, a couple older cats that had passed on, but it was just kind of miraculous that we'd been thinking that we might want to get a kitten and we'd want to get one in the fall. And so it just appeared on Facebook. Well, Kathy, oh, look what was 30 minutes ago. Oh, gets on, puts a little request in, tells the gal a little bit about us, and she answers back, well, um, thank you, and, but we're going to be looking at all different kinds of requests that come in through the day or, or different people that respond to this. So what happens at the end of the day, they go, you're the winner. Yeah. You win the kitten. 
And this person, now, I, I, I say this because we've been giving and giving and giving and giving and giving all these things away. We've been giving all this stuff away because we don't, we don't need it. It's just cluttering it up. We're giving it away. This gal, this kitten was four weeks old when she rescued it. And she put money into this kitten at the vet. She bought what they call a kitten package, which is all the shots and a checkup and a this and a that and some other stuff. That's a hundred bucks. And um, toys and food and litter and all, all kinds of stuff. And she goes, I don't want any money for this. You just, we, we met her, we, we saw the kitten, yes, we'll, we'll take the kitten. We made an arrangement to meet on the day that it had to go in for a surgery on its tail and get some shots. And <laughs> so she had spent all this money on this, and she said, I don't want, because she goes, I don't want any money. I just want this to go, I don't want this kitten to go to a good home. So we were the winners. We won this, but we couldn't stop there. Because this gal also has a dog that has cancer. And she's getting the dog treated at the veterinary center. So we thought, random act of kindness. We'll put some money on her bill, on her dog bill. Just kind of fit me to share that. So what we put out is what we get back. And, and whether we're affirming it by saying it or whether we're affirming it by thinking it, just the affirmation by itself is just one ingredient. When we add intention, attention, focus, action, treatment, visualization, the law of attraction, karma, and meditation, what you have, what you end up with, is a power pack ball that's just ready to explode. And say with me, and so it is.